Welcome to our tutorial on op amp circuits part 7 and uh, in this tutorial uh, today I'm going to discuss about the um, peak detector circuit okay so um, let me just uh, change the color for the moment there it is yeah so today we're going to discuss the peak detector circuit so uh, it's basically you know constructed using op amps okay so uh, here I would just like to show you how peak detector circuit looks okay so this is basically an op amp that I'm just drawing over here there it goes the non inverting and the inverting inputs respectively and for the peak detector circuit okay what happens basically is that we have an input uh, voltage signal you know applied at the non inverting input of the op amp and now the way uh, this uh, I mean uh, the way this um, input voltage basically you know, varies okay it can have um, you know uh, higher peaks and lower peaks if it's basically an AC uh, signal basically so um, we're using uh, this circuit in order to you know uh, detect or rather record the uh, voltage levels of the peak of this input voltage signal applied to the non-inverting input of this op amp okay so here at the output of this op amp we have a diode this is called a diode D over here and at the cathode of this diode we just connect a capacitor C okay there you go and uh, let's just call this one as terminal X and we have a feedback path okay from the uh, capacitors you know uh, I mean from the terminal X it is feeding to the non-inverting input of, I mean sorry to the inverting input of this op amp okay so uh, this is basically the circuit of a peak detector okay we'll just call the capacitor over here capacitor C okay that's right so now uh, the uh, as I said that the uh, input voltage level is basically a I mean the input voltage over here that's VI is basically a sinusoidal or rather a time varying uh, sort of a input signal so we're using this circuit in order to you know record the uh, peak voltage levels of this uh, input voltage signal that's VI okay so if you just uh, uh, you know apply okay if you just go forward and apply okay these are the graphs that I'm gonna show you over here so this is the graph for the input voltage and we have this op amp let's just call this op amp output terminal over here as the terminal Y okay so here we would have the output voltage at the terminal Y and we would require a final output voltage from the terminal X I'll just call it VOX in this case okay so uh, for the case I mean uh, just let's just consider it uh, right now that the capacitor over here has a I mean has you know store is just you know storing zero volts of charge I mean of voltage basically so now um, if we have an input voltage basically of I mean yeah that's too short okay so if we are gonna have an input voltage a sinusoidal input input voltage okay let's just assume that way so if we're gonna have this input voltage VI of a peak value of let's say VI P1 so here we're gonna have this uh, peak voltage of or rather I just call it over here as let's say VP1 okay so that's the peak value of this input voltage VI right now so um, this op amp circuit if you just take a you know closer look then you'll see it's just basically a voltage follower or a unity gain buffer which means that the uh, input signal would obviously appear in the same shape and size at the op amps output terminal Y right over here okay so here we'll get the uh, input signal in its uh, same form so here basically what happens is that now when this input uh, voltage basically appears at the terminal Y okay till the moment uh, yeah till the moment the, this uh, signal is just higher than 0.7 volts the diode D is just forward biased by this uh, signal available at the terminal Y and now this signal appears again in its same form at the terminal X and during this interval the capacitor C just begins to get charged with the voltage coming from uh, I mean uh, you know the voltage generated as output due to this input voltage VI over here so basically what happens is that at the output okay if I just you know use green over here the output voltage at the terminal Y would be the same as this input voltage in both shape and size okay so these are the sorry there 
so that's a bit too much flattened out there okay so that's much better so yeah this is much better in this case so here uh, this is the output uh, voltage that appears at the terminal Y and now the capacitor okay I'll just use blue to indicate this now the capacitor over here what it does is that it just begins charging okay whenever it has this input voltage I mean yeah it has uh, the voltage you know appearing at the terminal X the capacitor just begins to charge up till the peak value of this input signal that's you know VP1 in this case so the capacitor whenever it reaches the peak value that's VP1 it just maintains itself over there and you can see at the second half cycle there is also a negative peak okay so now when this negative peak again arrives at the terminal Y the diode D gets for I mean gets you know reverse biased and there is no conduction through the diode D and hence the capacitor maintains itself at the peak value that's VP1 which is of of course the you know positive peak of this input signal voltage VI okay so now uh, the capacitor would you know it just continue to remain uh, at this uh, peak voltage until and unless it just encounters any higher peak voltage okay uh, if it's just you know uh, it doesn't occur at the input voltage signal so if you would uh, you know uh, assume again a case okay second case when uh, the positive peak of this input voltage signal you know just rises to a higher value okay or rather I'll just draw it like this okay it rises to a higher value and then just falls to a lower peak voltage and then just continues throughout so um, in this case okay so here's the time axis okay, so I just you know forgot to label them so um, in this case as you can see the output uh, appearing uh, due to this change in the input voltage at the uh, terminal Y would also you know resemble the uh, same shape and size as per the input voltage waveform so there we go so it's approximately you know the of the same shape and size as you can see over here so there it is so now when this happens okay the capacitor prior to this uh, you know a change in the input signal was maintaining itself at the uh, previous peak voltage level that's VP1 and now when the capacitor uh, okay encounters uh, this you know higher voltage levels what it does is that it just charges itself to the highest value that's it just charges itself to this peak value so we can see here we have got three peaks that's VP1 over here and now here this is you know we can call it VP2 and this peak over here we can call it VP3 so the capacitor just out of which uh, I mean uh, just let me just uh, tell you that out of these three peak voltages available over here the peak volt I mean uh, the, the second peak voltage is basically the highest so we have here VP2 greater than VP3 which is also greater than VP1 so here uh, the peak voltage 2 is just the highest out of the three so the capacitor will just you know charge to the highest peak voltage and would just maintain itself right over there till it encounters any higher peaks compared to VP2 so basically what happens over here is that uh, when the change in input basically occurs okay so this is basically VP2 okay so let's let me, let me just name it over here okay so there it is so uh, what happens here is that um, whenever this uh, change in the input voltage signal VI just takes place okay then uh, basically uh, till the moment that this uh, output at the terminal Y of the op amp okay doesn't exceed I mean it just exceeds you know uh, 0.7 volts the diode D just gets forward biased and begins charging the capacitor again okay so now the capacitor just you know continues I mean uh, it was at the uh, previous voltage level I mean previous peak voltage level that's VP1 okay and now since it encounters a higher vo value of uh, you know peak voltage levels it just you know continues charging till that level okay that's VP2 and maintains itself over there so it doesn't fall off to VP3 as you can see so the highest peak out of the three is just indicated by the voltage that develops across this capacitor okay so we'll just you know call this as voltage uh, VOX so that's the volt output voltage at the terminal X so that's the final output voltage which I'm just gonna uh, just uh, the waveform or rather the uh, nature of this uh, output voltage I'm just gonna show you over here in this graph as well so what happens here is that I'll use the same color blue 
okay so the capacity just charged previously to VP1 and then right over here to VP2 and maintains itself over there so this was VP1 in the previous case and this was VP2 so the capacitor just maintains itself at the highest peak voltage level that's VP2 so now as you can see here uh, the capacitor in order to charge would require a certain charging time constant given by C I mean given by uh, multiplying uh, the uh, magnitudes of this capacitance of the capacitor and uh, the resistance uh, of I mean the forward resistance of this diode D in this case so if you just uh, you know uh, assume that the forward resistance of this diode D is just RF in this case and then by multiplying RF with C we'll get the charging time constant of the capacitor so there you go that's the charging time constant of the capacitor okay so uh, in this case what happens basically is that the capacitor just chase uh, just you know takes um, RF C seconds basically to uh, just charge itself to the uh, highest peak uh, that's uh, VP2 okay uh, whenever it encounters uh, this highest peak actually so um, other than that the capacitor uh, over here you know uh, doesn't have um, any kind of you know uh, significant uh, uh, discharge parts till the moment we don't uh, actually connect any sort of uh, you know load across the uh, capacitor terminals that's uh, the terminal X on the ground so if we are just you know planning to measure uh, the voltage dev I mean just uh, that uh, develops across the capacitor we would just you know think of connecting uh, a measuring instrument okay by attaching its leads to this terminal X with respect to ground so when we do that we just you know in effect we just connect a load resistance right over here okay whenever we're just trying to measure the voltage across the capacitor we're just going to connect a load resistance right over here and now the voltage developed across the load resistance is basically the voltage across the capacitor that's VOX in this case so uh, now this voltage uh, I mean this um, load resistance let me just call it RL in this case okay I'll just use a different color as it's not visible properly okay I think that should be just fine okay so there you go so now if I just you know call this um, load resistance as RL in this case so then RL you know needs to be high okay it needs to be at least in the uh, kilo ohms range so that you know uh, the capacitor volt I, I mean yeah the capacitor charge is not you know discharged pretty quickly and the capacitor is able to hold this uh, um, the uh, peak voltage that it's holding for a sufficiently long time inter interval okay so um, in order to just uh, ensure that okay and just make sure that we can just uh, take uh, I mean get the necessary uh, or rather sufficient time for measuring the voltage across the capacitor so that this uh, level doesn't I mean just doesn't you know fall off that way so we just have to uh, connect the uh, load resistance okay uh, I mean a uh, high value of load resistance across this okay so therefore um, the capacitor uh, whenever is connected to this uh, you know measuring device then we can see that the capacitor you know has a discharge path through this load resistance that is RL so apart from that the capacitor also has you know uh, two other potential discharge paths which is not apparent in a beginner's eyes okay so if you just take a look over here there is this feedback path you know connecting to the op amps inverting input so now a practical op amp you know uh, allows very minute amount of current through its input terminals so the capacitor can charge I mean rather discharge through uh, this uh, feedback path connected to the inverting input of this op amp okay and then it can just move through to the op amps ground I mean yeah ground terminal inside it so this is also a discharge path of the capacitor so other than that the uh, charge from the capacitor can also you know travel uh, through the diode in a reverse direction okay entering uh, yeah entering into the op amps output terminal so in uh, the reversed position the diode although in you know it offers uh, okay it just offers a, a very very high value of uh, i mean um, resistance okay to the uh, charge flowing through it so but still then it can you know serve as a discharge path to a little extent so we can see here that it has you know three potential discharge parts one through the uh, feedback loop 
one through the uh, this reversed diode okay and the other through this you know measuring uh, device that which we are connecting across the capacitor or rather the load resistance in this case okay so uh, just having said that we have just uh, come uh, come to the end of this you know tutorial you know explaining clearly about what happens and goes on as the mechanism of this uh, peak detector circuit is concerned so uh, basically this uh, circuit records the uh, you know highest peak of uh, the uh, input voltage so uh, just having said that we want to you know or rather we look forward to you know, wrapping our discussion right over here so till then it's just uh, thank you for now and don't forget to watch us on the next tutorial so it's uh, just goodbye and thanks for watching